Hi everyone. So today we're going to be going over actually two types of strategies. Um, previously I went over how to skim questions, so you can definitely check out that video. But today we're going to focus on highlighting and paragraph summaries, um, because these are the ones that I get the most questions about from students. So which one you choose to do or a combination is totally up to you. The main thing you should kind of try out is, okay, if I do uh, highlighting for kind of like two to three days, how does that affect my accuracy and my timing? So does it help me understand the passage better? Does it help me pull information from questions, etc.? You can also try out paragraph summaries for kind of the same amount of time, you know, like we're basically doing a little experiment, two to three days, and see how that affects your timing and accuracy, and kind of then a combo of both of them, highlighting plus summaries, trying it out for two to three days and see what works for you. So just keep in mind for any strategy that I go over, it, it takes some time to practice it and see if you enjoy it. And you can also tweak it to whatever kind of works for you. So what exactly to highlight? There's a few different things you can highlight. Some people like to highlight extreme words, um, the author's opinion, maybe nouns or like different names and topics that they mention or dates that they may forget as they're reading the passage, but can really quickly skim over if they ever wanna go back to the passage and look for information. Another thing that you can highlight is highlighting a sentence. I'll just write sentence. That kind of expresses the main idea. Um, so some people will highlight kind of like certain words or phrases or dates. Um, other people don't like to, and they want to highlight only a sentence. So I'll kind of show you how to do both, and you can decide on what you want to do. For summaries, uh, you want it to be about three to five words. It can go up to six, but you just want to avoid having like a whole sentence or two sentences because typically that could take too much time. I think the only exception to that rule is that if you find that you're struggling to kind of like compress the passage down or the paragraph down into a summary, then you should either consider, okay, should I write the summary in the first place or should I keep that long kind of summary that I have? But ideally you want it to be pretty short and simple. You wanna use it to keep track of main ideas, topics, any shifts in the author's argument or what they're kind of saying. Um, and it has a very similar function to highlighting. So both highlighting and the summaries can be used as a roadmap to kind of track ideas as you go through the passage, understand how the author builds their argument and the main idea, um, and also save a lot of time to prevent you from rereading if you do have to go back in the passage because you already have a map of what they talked about. And you can kind of figure out a little bit easier where to find specific information if a question refers you to a certain topic or you know, some kind of concept that they covered. Typically, the paragraph summary has been more helpful for that, um, but I have a lot of students who only use highlighting and enjoy doing that. So you can have a combination of both. So I have some students who like to highlight kind of extreme words. So let's see, highlight any topics, oops, names, like words, and then they'll write down a summary for each paragraph of I'll just put main idea of the paragraph. Another thing that you can try out is kind of doing the opposite. So you highlight the main idea, but then you go ahead and write down any topics or names or words. So, you know, this list right here is, you can write down a lot of different things, but basically main topics and maybe terminology or dates that they give you. So. You can try out either one of these, um, and I'll kind of give you an example of both of them in just a second. All right, so we've got a passage from Khan Academy. It's called, What is Life? A uh, question I always ask myself. So this is gonna be something that you can take a look at in the car section of the Khan Academy where they have a bunch of free passages. So what I'm gonna be doing today is basically walking through the two types of kind of like things you can do of combining highlights and paragraph summaries. Now keep in mind, if you decide that, hey, I don't want to write a summary or I don't want to write a paragraph or I don't want to highlight, um, you definitely can. Either way, you're gonna have examples of highlighting summaries and a combination of both in this passage. So you're gonna have plenty to work off of. So the first thing I'm gonna demonstrate is kind of how you can highlight uh, kind of like names and keep topics, highlight topics and then kind of write a more general overview main idea summary. So paragraph summary uh, that kind of focuses on 
the main idea of each paragraph. So we'll go ahead and read the first paragraph and then I'll kind of demonstrate the second way that you can do it um, in the next paragraph. So here it says, the greatest problem of biology is understanding the divide that exists between life and matter. So you can highlight as you read, um, or you can highlight once you finish reading the passage. But I'm going to go ahead and highlight just as I read, because it'll kind of help you figure out what are they talking about? What are some of the introductory topics? If there's any sentences that we're unsure about, we'll kind of evaluate it once we hit the end of the paragraph. So this first sentence is introducing some kind of great problem of biology, and it's the divide between um, life and matter. So I'll just highlight life and matter. You can also highlight divide just to keep that in mind. There seems to be an unbridgeable gulf between them, but how could life have emerged from matter if it is fundamentally different from it? So they're saying this divide between the two is unbridgeable, so it's something that you really can't connect between the two. But then they kind of ask like this really big question about how could life come from matter if they're supposed to be kind of different. Um, so I can maybe highlight fundamentally different, but to be honest, I don't know if I want to highlight anything here just because it would be a lot going on here. So you could highlight fundamentally different, but for now I'll leave it blank. Um, the received view today is that life is but an extremely complex form of chemistry, which is equivalent to saying that there is no fundamental divide between them. So the view kind of today is that life is this big form of chemistry, which is basically saying there's no divide between life and chemistry. I don't know if they're going to talk about life and matter quite yet, but that's the direction that we're going. So I'll say it's a form of chemistry. You can even highlight just chemistry, or you could highlight extremely complex form, but I'll just keep it simple and put form of chemistry. If you want to highlight extremely complex, that's totally fine. Um, and this is equivalent to saying that there is no fundamental divide between them. So you could even ha you could highlight fundamental divide between them, that whole sentence, or you can just highlight fundamental divide. So I'm going to keep it simple. Um, Primordial genes and primordial proteins appeared spontaneously on the primitive earth and gradually evolved into increasingly more complex structures, all the way up to the first cells, the basic units of life. So now they're kind of talking about maybe this chemistry aspect of it that they talked about in this sentence, um, but they're talking about it in terms of life on earth. So we have genes and we have proteins, they came spontaneously, they evolved, and then they evolved into basically cells. So I'm just going to highlight primordial genes and proteins. Um, you can highlight the other primordial, but it's basically the same thing. Um, they appeared spontaneously, and then they evolved into more complex structures, and they basically evolved into the first cells. Um, you could highlight something like evolved into more complex structures or whatnot, but I'm going to just keep it simple. Uh, mostly because if you highlight too much, then it gets a little bit confusing. So we can always highlight here and add anything on we want it later. The problem of which molecules came first has been the object of countless debates, but in a way it is a secondary issue. So they're basically saying of like which molecules, the genes or proteins came first. We're always debating it. And we're not really sure. But the author saying is that that's not the main issue that we should be focusing on. So I'll say the problem of which molecules came first was debated, but it's a secondary issue. So it's not really the main thing that we should be thinking about. What really matters is that spontaneous genes and spontaneous proteins had the potential to evolve into the first cells. So they're basically saying these spontaneous molecules that we talked about earlier could evolve into the first cells, and that's what's actually more important to focus on. So let's kind of highlight Spontaneous genes and proteins had the potential to evolve into the first cells. So you could highlight potential as well, but you know, the main thing is, is all these words are right next to each other. So if you have it highlighted, it should be an indication of what you just read. So these are more memory triggers. This, however, is precisely what molecular biology does not support. So molecular biology doesn't support this claim right here. So I like to highlight some transition words like however, because it's showing that, hey, we made this point, but here's the opposite of what we're talking about. And molecular biology does not support it. So you can highlight does not support or biology does not support. 
So they're basically going back and forth between life versus matter, this idea of chemistry, genes and proteins coming about spontaneously, and which molecules came first. But if we have so much information, it can be hard to write a summary. So it's really helpful to look at the first few sentences and the last few sentences. So the first few talk about life versus matter and this kind of divide. So I would write life versus matter. And kind of the last few sentences tell us, well, genes and proteins help us evolve into cells, but molecular biology doesn't really support this. Um, so maybe I'll write genes plus proteins into cells. Um, but I'll maybe like write question mark because they're kind of questioning it in that last sentence. So this one's a little bit longer. It's okay if it's a little more than five words or even with six. It's mostly just, hey, what are the main relationships that I'm looking at in the passage? So you always want to keep an eye out for contrasting relationships like life versus matter. You want to keep an eye out for one thing led to another kind of relationship. So genes plus proteins led to cells, um, comparing, contrasting, all that kind of stuff. So you want to keep those in mind. So this is one example of how you can kind of highlight different topics as you read to help you stay paced and to understand what they're talking about. And then using a mind idea summary to kind of just like encapsulate the main stuff that they mention. And what helps with that is looking at the first few sentences and the last few sentences, because the first few are going to be the claim kind of like just setting it up for you. So what is the author trying to convey or start off with? The last few is going to be your conclusion. So that can teach you, hey, this is the stuff that the author wants me to kind of take away from this passage or this paragraph. Um, so yeah, that's the first paragraph. So for the second paragraph, what we're going to do is we'll try out the other way of doing highlights and summaries, which is we're going to, let me write it over here, we're going to highlight the main idea and basically write a summary, you know, a paragraph summary, let me just put P for paragraph. Uh, paragraph summary or kind of like noting down, note down any key topics that we think are important. So it's always helpful to write down or even highlight, you know, as you're reading it. Um, so kind of like highlighting and writing down if depending on what you want to use is what are some of the new ideas that they present to me that maybe I will learn more about? Um, what are any topics that they mention over and over again? So kind of like in that previous paragraph we did, they talked a lot about life versus matter, life and chemistry, kind of this idea of cells. And so since those are repeated elements that the author kind of expands upon, that's what I would want to keep track of, either via highlights or via writing them down. So for this paragraph, we're kind of going to go through it, see what's important to us, and then we'll write down uh, some of those topics and highlight kind of a sentence or two that seems to be the main idea. So Genes and proteins of the first cells had to have biological specificity, and specific molecules cannot be formed spontaneously. So why did they mention this? It's probably because we were talking about spontaneous genes and proteins and how that led to life. So now they're kind of disproving that. Genes and proteins have to be biologically specific, so they can't really be spontaneous, which is the claim that they made in the last paragraph. They can only be manufactured by molecular machines, and their production requires entities like sequences and codes that simply do not exist in spontaneous processes. So this is them explaining why specific molecules can't be spontaneous. It's because they need certain sequences and codes that don't come about in a spontaneous way. This is what really divides matter from life. So this is the author directly saying, hey, this is how we look at life versus matter. It's because of this non-spontaneous stuff going on. All components of matter arise by spontaneous processes that do not require sequences and codes, whereas all components of life arise by manufacturing processes that do require these entities. So this is them actually going more into depth about that divide between matter and life, and they're putting it in context of the stuff that they talk about up here, about molecular machines and specific codes and non-specific or non-spontaneous stuff. They're basically saying that matter doesn't come about by sequences and codes, but life comes about by sequences and codes. It is a signaling of these sequences and codes or, or what is it? semiosis 
that makes the difference between life and matter. So they're saying that, hey, here's a little bit more about what divides life and matter. It is semios, yeah, semiosis that does not exist in the inanimate world, inanimate world, so in matter, and that is why biology is not a complex form of chemistry. So in this paragraph, they've kind of disproved the spontaneous argument from the last paragraph, and also the argument that life is some big complex form of chemistry, and they did it by showing the actual divide between life and matter, which is that life uses codes and sequences that are spontaneous, whereas matter doesn't use these codes and sequences, so it can't be spontaneous. So if we were to highlight something, I'd maybe want to highlight this because it's telling us, hey, this is what's the actual difference. Um, you can either highlight that sentence before over here, um, where it kind of talks about sequences and codes that don't exist in spontaneous processes, but I kind of like the sentence below it because it explains it a little bit more. So all components of matter arise by spontaneous processes that don't require sequences and codes. And then all components of life arise by manufacturing processes that do require kind of these spontaneous uh, coding and all that kind of stuff. And maybe something else I'd want to highlight is this kind of signaling or that term right there makes a big difference. And why do I want to highlight that? Because they use this to then disprove another argument from the passage. And on a similar note, they use this argument to disprove something from the last paragraph as well. So this was in the previous paragraph, and this claim was in the previous paragraph, and they use those to kind of disprove it. So that's why I want to highlight those sentences, because it summarizes what they're trying to say, and it relates back to stuff from the previous paragraph. So if I wanted to actually jot some stuff down, I might say something like, this proves um, kind of like this biological specificity argument. Plus, it also disproves this idea that um, bio is chem. So biology is chemistry. You could also say like, Biospecificity, specificity, maybe you could say it's false, and you could also say bio or biology is not a complex form of chemistry. That's another way you can write it. So what I basically wrote down was stuff that we didn't highlight, so that if you're skimming over your summaries or you're skimming over your highlights, you can kind of get a feel for both of them. But again, if you just want to highlight or you just want to write summaries, these are the same things that you can work off of, um, and there's two ways that you can do it. So hopefully these examples were helpful. Remember that the first paragraph we did was where we kind of highlighted here. We highlighted uh, key terms and topics, so key terms slash topics, and then we wrote down Uh, kind of the main idea. So that was that first paragraph, and that's something you can try. Uh, for the second paragraph, we did this approach. And if you decide, hey, I only want to do highlighting or I only want to do a summary, you basically have four options you can pick. You can, you can do this one, you can do this one, this one, or this one. So you've got four options in how you're, you're able to do it. I just did some of them in combination to just help out um, and kind of give an idea of how you can combine them if you choose to. Um, but yeah, that's basically how to use highlighting and summaries. Um, I'll go ahead and link this passage so you can take a look. But yeah, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Any feedback I'd appreciate in the comments. And please feel free to share this with other people as well. Thanks.